Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having an absolutely incredible day. Helping out the channel is easy. You can do it by leaving a like, by leaving a comment or multiple comments. They all add up and they do help with the algorithm. It shows YouTube that I have a lot of engagement and activity, and then they show my video to other people. Uh, get ready for another really intense, crazy video. I know that's been the theme for the last three weeks. Someone wrote on Twitter, this was like a couple of days ago, they were like, can you please stop saying that every single video is like big or crazy? And I, I can't help it. A lot of the news actually is quite big and crazy. And until an, I find another word in English, I have to keep using those. For those of you not looking at the screen, it says Bitcoin will explode by over 4,600%. This is according to ARK Invest CEO Kathy Wood. It says here's her timeline. It's basically after the next halving and the one after that. She believes that by the year 2030... Bitcoin is going to be over a million dollars per coin. She says there is nothing in her mind that says otherwise. The price news today is a bit intense. It's a little bit all over the place. You're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. There's a lot of pessimistic optimism, euphoria happening with prices right now. Uh, mainly off the back of, if you missed out yesterday, the news that the Federal Reserve had raised interest rates and that the next interest rate raise may not be as large as the last raise and therefore could be a slowing down of the raising of interest rates. And now everyone and their mother is talking about how high Bitcoin and Ethereum are going to go, what the next leg up is. The time frame is still there uh, as far as March next spring for prices everywhere to really begin moving up once again. The most popular, one of the most, there's a, there's a struggle here, most popular price news stories of the day. For those of you not looking at the screen, it says Dogecoin dumps by 8%. On reports that Twitter has paused its plans for a crypto wallet, where do I begin? People are very dramatic for no reason. I don't know why people are this way. Anyway, so the news basically is Elon Musk officially purchased Twitter. I think it's been almost exactly a week. I don't know the timeline. He now owns Twitter. The other part is there was a lot of speculation that came out of really almost nowhere that in his first week of owning Twitter, he was going to integrate crypto into the Twitter platform. This was thrown into the air because Chung Peng Tsao from Binance apparently gave half a billion dollars for the acquisition of Twitter to Elon Musk. And the idea was that Chung Peng Tsao kept on saying that he wanted to integrate crypto and Web3 directly into Twitter. Part two of that was Elon Musk posted a photo of a doge of a Shiba Inu uh, on Halloween with a wink above it. And this photo of a dog wearing, I think it was a pumpkin outfit and an emoji that gave a wink, let people believe that the introduction of crypto on Twitter was imminent. So I don't know if people realize this, but you, you know, it takes a while to actually do things. The code wasn't ready to integrate Dogecoin and crypto immediately. I was listening to a podcast about the, the steps of uh, Twitter's acquisition. And it's a lot more than just seeing uh, what you've seen. It takes a while. So I do still believe logically uh, that as they need extra revenue sources, because people keep forgetting that Twitter itself is actually not profitable. So they need to have ways to be able to actually create extra revenue to make the $44 billion price tag worth it. Because he didn't take all of that money from his own money. 
he actually had a bunch of other people join in and they threw in other billions as well to help with the acquisition. So they also want to be paid. So at some point they will probably be integrating crypto into the Twitter platform. It's just not today. And we got news that they're not doing it right now when everybody wants at this exact moment. And Dogecoin, I think at one point, fell by almost 11 12%. I was looking at it and I was like, let me guess what happened. So this is, of course, uh, making the rounds. It says, has Musk abandoned Dogecoin? Why are people so dramatic? Doge price drops as Twitter scales back crypto plans. He just bought the I, I don't even care for Elon Musk and I'm standing on his side just simply saying he just bought it how do you want everything immediately it's been like five or six days I was expecting like a good month or two into the acquisition for an announcement that in quarter one of next year they'd be doing it you know you so I mean just logic here if we've been talking so much about uh, regulatory this and anti-money laundering that, you do realize that the 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 steps, he, here we go, here's a logic bomb for everyone, the steps of actually integrating cryptocurrencies into a social media platform is that they're going to then start asking you for your personal data. You can't anti-money launderingly Add Dogecoin and Bitcoin and Ether and these other coins to the platform and just use them how you want and send them to your friends at any point. You can't have someone give you a million dollars on this platform and you simply go, cool, now I have a million in this coin. No, that's not. Have you not lived on this planet before? You are going to be required to give them your ID and your passport and also show them where you live, your address, all the normal information that you would be giving to a bank. This will make the social media platform simply like a banking platform where you will, they will have all of your information on file. Should you do something that the US or Europe or any other country does not want you monetarily doing? I think people forgot about that part really, really fast. This wasn't a a $12 million acquisition in the background. This was a highly publicized $44 billion public acquisition, which is also, for I think, further in the news somewhere around here as well. So for people thinking that Twitter is going to be this like open, super crazy place, no, no, no. You have, you have something coming to you, I'm telling you. Uh, you are going to, if you want to continue using the platform, especially using it in a cryptocurrency manner, uh, swapping out Doge with you and your friends, the U.S. government is going to want to know who's moving those coins around, and they're going to want your inf information, and therefore Twitter is going to be required to gather your information before you can start using Dogecoin Twitter. I don't understand why people still don't get how the world actually works. Also, in crypto news, that isn't really crypto news, but this was also everywhere in the crypto news space. Elon Musk is facing multiple class action lawsuits for mass layoffs on the platform. Yeah, right. Remember that part? So for those of you who missed it, and I and I envy you in so many ways that you missed out on a lot of this crazy news. Uh, allegedly, the news is, is that on the day of the official purchase of Twitter, Elon Musk walked into Twitter headquarters holding a sink. The idea was, oh, let that sink in. <laughs> it was meant to be a clever ploy for everything that was going on. Let it sink in that he is now the um, head of Twitter. Allegedly, what happened behind the scenes, I, was, I told you, I, was listen, I, I listen to podcasts about everything. I like having as much information as possible. Allegedly, what happened was that he began to walk around the offices uh, proclaiming that many people were going to be fired. Apparently, a couple of people were asking him, hey, are you going to fire this section of the team? And he gave like little musky jokes and was like, who knows? We we'll always have to see what the future holds. Apparently, according to California law, you can't just walk in and start firing people. You actually have to give them due notice. And a lot of people on Twitter who some for some reason keep fanboying Elon Musk uh, didn't realize that. And now they're upset that there are actual lawsuits against him for the mass layoffs. For those of you who missed it, it was speculated that he was going to fire around 75% 
of Twitter staff. No one was actually notified of this. No one was actually given paperwork. The only news that was floating around was stuff that was actually in the news on CNBC and other places of people talking about it. You can talk about mass layoffs for JP Morgan or some other company, but they may not happen. You are usually given, hey, in about nine weeks time, we are going to be laying you off. This is due notice before so-and-so. Right. You, you, you can't do that. And I, and I give you this one as well for everyone who's still like, well, it's his company. I'm going to give you this one right here and, and, and do with it what you will. Imagine where you work. Imagine the people who pay you, who have employed you for two, three, four, five, six years, however long you've been working there. Imagine today someone walks into your office holding a sink and they say, I am the new owner of this building. And they go, tew, 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 tew. you guys are all fired. Would you still back them? Would, would you think that their joke holding it? I mean, he fired me, but dude, him holding that sink was hilarious. I don't even mind being laid off. I guess I'll just go on unemployment for a couple of months and see if I can find something. That's not how the world works. I don't understand. I, this was very popular crypto news. This is not crypto news, but this was everywhere in the cryptocurrency space because so many people keep backing Elon Musk, not realizing that everything that he nearly does is absolutely insane. It's meant to make you laugh, but that's not how the world is supposed to work. Also, in price news, bringing it on back because that took a huge section of it. It says why Cardano could be gearing up for a rally. It's basically because uh, at the moment, a lot of cryptocurrency prices are currently moving on up. And the news floating around is, is that prices will continue to move on up. This happens every single time. You know this. Every time that we end up hearing that coins are moving up or someone believes that coins are going to be moving up higher or this coin is going to be doing this. We always end at a situation where, uh, what do you call it? Uh, people begin to write articles or then believe that other prices are going to be moving up. And therefore, this is why we have an article that says, could Cardano be gearing up for a rally? It could be. No one actually knows. Prices are completely insane all over the place. And we could see a massive rally across the entirety of the cryptocurrency market. It still also fits into if the stock market is going to be rallying as well. We are not decoupled. We are actually holding hands quite quite closely, and both of our palms are quite sweaty. Also, and this is also the other most popular price news story of the day. For those of you not looking at the screen, it says Matic, that is Polygon, is eyeing a 200% rise on Polygon adoption by Instagram and JP Morgan Chase. Polygon's list of high profile partners, the list keeps getting longer. They now have Disney, Starbucks, and Robinhood, along with Instagram and JP Morgan Chase. Remember how I always say, like, actually follow the money? Rich people tend to do what other rich people do. This tells me that behind the scenes, this has been discussed for a while. This is not random. This is not haphazard. This is not something sim poly polygon. Poly I like I like the sound of that. We should actually use that blockchain. No. They've gone through the numbers. They saw how robust it was or was not and how much usage they can actually do with the chain. Money is always flowing in the exact same direction. I tell you all of this all the time. There's a reason why the coins that are in the news are actually in the news. These are the coins that are actually being used. And every other time that a brand new coin pops up and someone tells you to use it because it's meant to be the thing that's going to get rid of Cardano or get rid of Solana or get rid of Ethereum, and this is going to be the next new brand amazing, awesome thing, start putting your money into it, they're usually lying to you. It's just important to I simply follow. Like, you don't always have to read between the lines. It's simply there in your face. We now have explicit news that JP Morgan Chase has used Polygon. I don't know if I have the actual thing in here. They basically uh, sent a smart contract for something that was worth $71,000 and they liked the results. Instagram is going to be launching, officially launching NFTs on their platform. You are going to be able to mint, trade, sell, collect NFTs and create them at the drop of a dime as you post a photo on Instagram. And Instagram is going to officially be using Polygon as their chain. We also had news earlier this year that Disney, Starbucks, and Robinhood were also going to be using it. But a lot of times, people within the cryptocurrency space get so distracted, 
so easily. You heard that Disney and Starbucks were going to be using Polygon and you still went for another brand new coin thinking that it was going to outpace it or have more usage than it. Surprise, guess what? It didn't. So, as I mentioned earlier this year and also in my Money Rules videos, I usually have a little segment called like coins I'm bullish on, crypto I'm buying this week. Polygon constantly makes it because Polygon is huge. This is not financial advice, but I would implore you to also look into Algorand. Look at what Algorand is doing and the partnerships that they have. One of their largest ones is FIFA. FIFA has, I think, what was it? 1.3 billion fans around the world who are really into football. They're going to be issuing NFTs and using Algorand as their main blockchain for everything FIFA. So at the moment, um, or even two days ago, Polygon was around 73 cents or something like that. Then it went to 94 cents. And now it is currently around, I think, a dollar and 14, 13 cents somewhere around there. Yeah, this is gigantic news that we keep getting news that all these mega companies are going to be using the same blockchains over and over and over. That means that they've been testing it and have been using it. I told you even before, there's a reason why Polygon is constantly in the news. It is basically the place to issue and use and sell and trade and buy NFTs. It's gigantic. It's massive. It is basically the Ethereum scaling solution that we've been waiting for for a number of years. We were constantly told that Ethereum's chain was going to be doing this. For those of you who do not know, Polygon is on top of Ethereum and therefore Ergo, if you will, is also Ether. Uh, yeah. But it's what we've been waiting for, and it works very, very well. It is kind of the go-to place for everyone. Minting stuff on it costs nothing. When I sell an NFT, the transaction fee for the other person or even for whatever is usually one cent. It's incredible. It's what we've all been waiting for. So in extremely price popular, I'm hitting my hand, price popular news, Polygon Matic is up by another 17% well transactions have hit an eight-month high. I give it two months. People always forget. People, the, the coins price, I don't know where prices are going to go. There will be another lull period because people will forget. At some point, this coins price will hit $3 and people are going to go, dude, it was like 40 something cents last year. Why did I? Yeah, because people keep not paying attention to what's actually happening in this space. So that's the Polygon price news. I told you, see, remember at the beginning, I was like, I told you it's going to be like another like crazy, big, huge, amazing, crazy uh, price day. And that's just how things are. Also in the price news, it says stocks closed lower for a fourth day. So this was around 12, 13 or something odd hours ago. We got news that after the uh, Fed rate hike news, that apparently stocks began to fall off of fear of, um, it's not just job reports, it's it's earning reports from, from a number of other companies who are also going to be announcing how much money they did or did not make. Uh, this is a couple of minutes ago. It says stock futures rise as Wall Street anticipates October jobs report. Apparently, there is a lot of optimism. A number of companies have like pre-released reports. I don't know how to put it into words otherwise who have basically announced that they have actually made more money than they were anticipating. They actually hired more people than they were anticipating. We're also waiting to see if uh, people found jobs over the course of October. That's a major thing for the U.S. economy and a reflection on if the Federal Reserve is going to actually continue raising interest rates at the current rate that they've been doing, the entire idea being. If jobs are down or low or people didn't find jobs, it then likely increases the risk of the Federal Reserve raising interest rates even higher. However, if people found jobs, if joblessness word, wow, is lower, or if companies have continued to make an appropriate amount of money more than they anticipated making before, this then lowers the risk of the Fed having to increase interest rates by a larger amount, and therefore stocks will rise and crypto will rise, and this is why stock futures are now up, and also why the cryptocurrency market is currently in green. That was just all the price news. So, at the moment, some prices are up, some prices are down. There's a lot of optimism for a very few sliver of coins. Uh, Litecoin, for some reason, has been pumping the last couple of days. There's been no explicitly crazy Litecoin news other than, oh gosh, what was it? Um, Was it Robinhood? No, 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 no. 
What company was it? There was a company three or four days ago who announced that uh, it was MoneyGram. There we go. MoneyGram announced, for those of you who missed that as well, that they're going to be adding Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin to their app. <coughs> and you're going to be able to buy those coins on the MoneyGram thing. But that was the last Litecoin news that we actually received. So, <coughs> sorry, kind of weird. Hold on. I had a sip of water. Um, yeah, that's the price news. And let's move on. Also in popular news, and I don't really know why this was popular news. I'll explain. It says Newton, as in Isaac Newton, one of the most popular crypto exchanges in Canada. Uh, okay. Has announced that it has relisted XRP. It says the XRP Ledger's native token. That is a stretch, dude. The new development was announced on the 2nd of November by Dustin Walper, the CEO of Newton. The new development implies that Newton is the first crypto exchange to relist XRP since the long-standing Ripple SEC lawsuit was filed. Dustin Walper tweeted, Surprise! We relisted XRP on Newton. And then there's the tweet for it right there. So, one, there already have been other exchanges who relisted XRP uh, after the SEC lawsuit began. Two, um, this doesn't make any sense, and I will tell you why. The lawsuit is Ripple versus the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, not versus the Canadian anything. So every we had this news, for those of you who missed it, at the beginning of 2021, this was around January, that every exchange around the world was already able to list XRP on their platform. You do remember the news that we even had where Brad Garlinghouse went on to CNBC and he basically said, no, he said it outright. He said, no, there's no real, the issue is, is that the SEC has a problem with the company Ripple. Every exchange is already able to relist XRP. There's no real problem with it there. So this was popular news because it has the words XRP in it and also relisting of XRP. But there was nothing stopping a Canadian exchange from relisting a coin that they never had to delist in the first place. Yeah, I know. Crazy, right? So this was popular news. Um, good luck to them. We also had news before that Coinbase can do the exact same thing. Um, but they still have yet to do so. That's the Canadian crypto exchange has relisted XRP. I assume once again, follow the money. This has to probably, I don't know Newton, but you know, here we go. I assume this has to do off the back of the news that we've been receiving for the last couple of weeks that Ripple may win their lawsuit and they may be trying to get in beforehand. It's also the news that was in that six or seven companies have joined Ripple against the SEC in their lawsuit. I think it's all just people trying to get better press because um, that's how it always works out. That's the XRP news. Let's move on. Also in, sure, why not? I don't know why this guy. Four congressmen have accused the United States and Securities Exchange, Securities and Exchange Commission under Gary Gensler of regulatory hypocrisy and inconsistency. They added, while the SEC is failing to comply with federal transparency and record-keeping laws, the SEC is aggressively enforcing record-keeping laws on private businesses. Four, make, four lawmakers sent a letter to the chairman of the U.S. SEC on Tuesday denouncing the Biden administration's inconsistency and hypocrisy of enforcing record Biden can barely tie his shoes I don't think this is anything to do with Biden I think American news has a really big time doing that where they throw in Biden administration it's this guy it's Gary Gensler throw all the blame on Gary Gensler I don't even think Biden probably knows what a cryptocurrency is if you try to explain to him Mining or a hash rate, he would probably implode. This is all Gary Gensler. 
The letter was signed by four U.S. representatives. They said recent reports suggest that the SEC officials are using off-channel communications such as Signal, WhatsApp, Teams. What is Teams? I've never heard of Teams. And Zoom for official business and without uh, producing these records in response to open record requests. Everybody hates the SEC. It's it's really it's a it's an insane phenomenon that's currently happening right now. And I think everyone's kind of gotten some type of courage within themselves to be able to uh, fight back or scream collectively at the SEC at the exact same time. <clears throat> I myself personally believe that the SEC is corrupt. You can go through all the paperwork yourself and come up with your own conclusion. But something's clearly off. Something's not right with everything that's been going on. It's apparent, at least to me. That there's some money being pushed around because the SEC keeps announcing that they uh, want regulations and are preparing regulations, but it doesn't take that long to file out a bunch of paperwork. It maybe takes six months at most. So this was also quite popular news. Anytime that Gary Gensler is in the news, it ends up making popular news. But I think the fact that so many people are now openly pushing against the SEC there's also new. I don't have it here, but there's there's another news story. There's like always a bunch of lawyers who are coming forward and they're talking about like how they believe that something also isn't right. There's like a lack of paperwork. There was also news earlier that apparently the SEC is trying to file for another extension in the Ripple versus SEC case, trying to make the lawsuit go longer. Part of the problem is, or the entire problem is, it's been going on for two years. They've only produced a handful of paperwork and they keep denying anything else that doesn't benefit them so yeah anyway that's the gary gensler news um wonderful we're, we're going to continue to have corruption until we actually get someone who actually wants to enforce proper law and not just yeah that's the gary gensler news let's move on also in the news as very popular news <clears throat> The largest crypto exchange on the planet, Binance, is reportedly looking into acquiring banks. That's with an S. According to a new report by Bloomberg, Binance is weighing the pros and cons of purchasing banking institutions as traditional finance becomes increasingly interconnected with the digital asset industry. I don't really think this has to do with it becoming intertwined as much as this is kind of the logical next step of what... Binance wants to do. They want to control and own everything, and they're doing a very good job at it. So the next step for them is to be able to buy banks. For those of you who don't know the uh, power of banks within the cryptocurrency space, a lot of even there's also banking news here as well. So you'll definitely see it. A number of years ago, there were a lot of banks who completely chose not to work with anyone in the cryptocurrency space. <coughs> the idea was is that crypto's fraudulent, crypto's wrong, crypto's this, crypto's that. So a lot of times, it was happening around the world. If at some point you send $500 to Coinbase to purchase crypto, it says it on your banking records, 500 sent to Coinbase. Uh, there were many banks who were blocking accounts and freezing accounts because they claimed that the people who were sending the money, were, that they were doing something fraudulent. You have to be doing something evil if you're sending money to go buy some Bitcoin. Only, only terrible people are using it. And then they began to announce that they are shutting off bank accounts and they're stopping this. It was an, an entire saga. And this was around the time when Charlie Lee, the creator of Litecoin, announced that he was also going to try and buy a bank. And then someone else was going to try and buy a bank. And this person was going to try and buy a bank. I don't think any of those acquisitions actually went through because we no longer hear about any of them. So this is kind of one of the things. There's, once again, there's also banking news in here as well that you're also going to be able to uh, hear about. The entire idea is if you own a bank or banks you then kind of can become the de facto place that everyone can go to who's into crypto without worrying that they're going to be denied or that their accounts are going to be frozen or that anything is going to be shut off simply because they're trying to buy or sell crypto. It happened to a lot of people as well, where people made really good money off of the cryptocurrency markets, were sending half a million dollars, what have you, to their bank accounts, and their bank accounts were frozen for months. Where'd you get this money from? I got it. Selling and trading crypto. Can you prove that? Yes, I can prove it. Well, it doesn't seem like you can actually prove it. It was an entire thing. And this is why they're trying to buy a bank. 
Binance CEO Chang Peng Sao said that the firm is planning on bridging the gap between digital assets and traditional finance. Sao made his statements at a crypto conference in Portugal. According to the report, he said there are people who hold certain types of local licenses, traditional banking, payment services, even banks. We're looking at all those things. We want to be the bridge between crypto and the traditional financial world. Uh, very big news. Not really much more to say about it other than everything that I already said. I assume that they are going to actually do this. I don't think this everything that Binance says they end they end up doing. It's always really intense, like all the time. So good for them. Um, <clears throat> what more can I say? Coinbase isn't doing it. Gemini is not doing it. No other crypto exchange is doing what they're doing. They have so much money. It's really insane. There was um there's an article. I'm sure you can find it somewhere. I think it was called like. Uh, from McDonald's to a billionaire or something like that. Apparently, Chung Peng Tao used to work in the McDonald's, and then about 10 years later, uh, he's one of the richest people on the planet. So, you know, never give up on your dreams, everybody, because apparently it can still happen. Um, right. That's the Binance is planning to buy banks, I assume, very soon. Given next summer, once all the paperwork is filed and stuff like that, I wonder if they'll rename it. That'd be kind of weird. Like Binance Bank. Banking with Binance. I mean, it does have a ring to it. Anyway, that's the Binance buying banks news. Yeah. Let's move on. Also in banking news, multinational banking group Santander has placed a limit on all crypto transactions for their customers in the United Kingdom, the group cited cryptocurrency fraud warnings from regulators as the reason behind the decision. According to an announcement on the 3rd of November, the bank plans to protect their customers from the risks associated with investing in crypto assets. Sharing that money held in customers' crypto wallets is unlikely to be protected by the Financial Ombudsman Service and Financial Services Compensation Scheme if something goes wrong. So, one of the most popular news stories of the day. The bank Santander UK is only allowing people a maximum of £1,000 per transaction and a limit of £3,000 for the entire month. This is not being done for customer protection. This is because a lot of banks are currently failing and a lot of banks are seeing their money being transferred into the cryptocurrency space. How do they see this? Well, they see it on your bank statement. They can see every month if they have 38,000 clients who are constantly putting tons of money into the cryptocurrency space and that money is no longer in their bank account, the bank is losing money. They make money off of your money. This is very similar to what we've heard from a number of countries who have uh, word is uh, dictators over the last couple of years. It's an exact mimic of it. The idea was from the number of other countries is that they would require people. So basically... If you were rich enough, you could put as much money into crypto as you wanted. Those were the laws and still are the laws in a number of other countries. If you are an everyday average citizen, you had a yearly limit. There was one country, they are above China, who made this law a couple of years ago. One of the propositions that they made was, we spoke about this also recently as well. It was if you put too much money into the cryptocurrency space over the course of a year you would actually get in trouble and would have a fine, and the fine would be even larger than the amount of money you were yearly allowed to put into it. And also think of it this way. You are limited to £3,000 a month putting your money into the cryptocurrency space. Uh, however, banks around the world, think about it this way. The moment you are of age, you are able to go into twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 debt to go get an education. It's funny how they're not limiting that one, but they're stopping it for cryptocurrency transactions. There's no limit, liter literally no limit for many banks on how much money you can take out for a loan on a house. Isn't it funny and weird 
You can take out a loan to buy as much money as you want from the bank, having to pay them back for the next 30 years. But this is being halted. This is being stopped. This is being slowed down. It's always the same. And even more so, here's another one. If there was an actual really big problem, every bank within the United Kingdom would have set these limits immediately. It's just Santander. It's always the same. There's always one bank. I would go as far as to even say, I don't know how much money Santander is making, but this is simply a ploy to try and keep money within their ecosystem. This is something that China also did a number of years ago as well. For those of you who missed out on that one, this was around 2015, 2016. It made major news, but a lot of people did not pay attention to it, even though it was one of the craziest things that ever happened. They began to limit the amount of money that you could take out of the country. One of the ideas was is that people began to see that over the course of 20 years, their economy was doing, I would say, extremely well, trying to prepare for the future. However, a lot of people began to see what the country was actually like, and they began to take their money out of the country. This is around the time where you saw housing prices in Canada, mainly Vancouver, um, and also in London and in Paris began to really skyrocket. Why? Because a lot of people within that country were taking their money out and they were buying real estate around the world as another place to put their money. They did not want all of it within the borders. But then China was like, nope, actually, the maximum you can take out per year, I believe the first instance was half a million dollars of your money and no more. The money that you make has to stay within the country. And then that wasn't followed, so they lowered it down to 100000 And that's when a lot of people began to actually start going to auctions, and the art market exploded, completely jumped. Can anyone tell me why? Because people began to use their money to buy pieces of art. There was no restriction on how much art you could buy, and people would buy these really nice, beautiful pieces of art, and they would then send them, can you guess where? To Vancouver, to Toronto, to Paris, and to London to be then resold at other auctions, and that was the way that they got their money out of the country. If you, if you ever have a chance to really look into it, if this interests you in any sort of way as far as like capital controls and the idea of like why we have crypto, uh, that number is now even lower for China. There are a number of co uh, companies, mega companies. I won't name them. I don't have to name them. The, the, the biggest companies on the planet, also the U.S. government. For those of you who don't know, the U.S. has a significant, highly significant amount of money locked inside of China. Uh, the way that it works is, is basically all your money is meant to continue flowing, reflow within that ecosystem. So there are a lot of companies who make billions in China and they can never take that money out of the country. So they actually are forced to build real estate and to buy real estate and to buy stores and all these other things to keep the money flowing because it's stuck within there. And a lot of companies did not realize that it was going to be that bad because all they saw was that they were making money and now their money's stuck there. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. Uh, if you dance with the devil, that's what you get. So the news is um, Santander UK is stopping people from putting money into the cryptocurrency market. They say that they're doing it to reduce fraud and all this other stuff. Have you ever looked into payday loans within the United Kingdom? That's also a very good documentary. I'm, you, you can find it quite easily. Open a new tab and type in uh, UK payday loans. There's also no <laughs> real restrictions on those either. As many times as banks would try to continue to say that they're doing something for our benefit or to make it better for us or to make things better for people or to stop fraud and all this other stuff, you must know what a payday loan is. It's basically... If you don't have the money at that moment, you can go to these places. They're everywhere. They're not just within the UK, but the UK has a special relationship with them. You can walk into these places and say, hey, I need 2,000 pounds to be able to pay my rent. And they go, cool, no problem. And they ask you to sign the paperwork. They never really ask you to look through the entirety of the paperwork. And at the very bottom, you can see that you're given an interest rate, how much money you have to pay back per month. If they don't go over it with you explicitly, red flag, a lot of times it's over 300% that you have to pay back per month. And if you end up missing a monthly payment, that can actually go up to like 500%. Crazy, right? Weird how there's no real limits or restrictions put on those things, but it's cryptocurrency that's the real problem for everyone. And the real problem that a number of people in a number of countries are going to have over the course of the next couple of years is when they realize what their governments have done to them and what the banks have done to them. If you have the money... After you have paid for all your bills, paid for your rent, child support, I know there's someone out there giving you a high five, and all these other things, at the end of all that, that money is, is discretionary. It is yours. You can choose to do with it 
what you will. There are going to be a lot of people who would have been able, especially in India, who would have been able to put a lot of money into the cryptocurrency market after they paid their bills and paid for everything else, yada, yada, yada. And they're going to realize that a restriction from, from $1,000, 1,000 pounds, that's a huge amount. Anyway, I, I could go on about this forever, talking about this entire thing. But, you know, time and all that. Anyway, very popular news or very much spoken about news. Banks aren't doing too well. This is why banks are getting into the cryptocurrency space because they see what's happening. They see where the money is flowing. You can see month on month how much money left your bank to go to Kraken, to go to Coinbase, to go to Gemini, to go to Binance. And then you add all that up over the course of a year and you say, ah, we lost several hundred million dollars over the course of all of our branches and other places around the world Two people putting it into crypto. How do we get them to come back? We restrict how much money can actually leave the bank account. It's always the same. It's always the exact same thing. There are so many other things. You realize that they're also not stopping people from putting money into stocks. There are a lot of stocks that fell by 60 to 90% over the course of this year. Weird that they're not putting limits on people buying stocks, even though stocks have been super volatile. That's very weird. Why would the bank... Hmm. I guess we'll never find out. Anyway, that's the Santander. I was going to say corruption news, but I'll go light. That's the Santander UK. They're not the only bank. Don't forget that. There are a lot of other banks who have banned people from using or having or dealing in crypto within their own account. So, yeah. Let's move on. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters, GBU, Wally, Dotha, Diddy, Manny Cryptos, Crypto, Gambino, Bubble Mode, How's Life, Austin, Auspicious, Agile, and Blockchain, Jamie Saad, Blockchain Simplified, and let's move on, Empire Queen, Roman, Geba, Bitcoin, Ben, Arachno, Dave, Tony, Ambrosky, The Dealers, Den, Captain, Something, and The Z-Way, Lay, Mo, Barazi, VB, Nerd, 21, Miguel, Grolet, Lauren De Silva quoted Biddy Troy, All Good Space Case, Need a Miracle, Pat Ternoster, Navarro Williams, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Martin Stroyer, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal, Rita, Bibliophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam, Grace, Wise, Nine, Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Cole D3D, Setsuna, Richie Rich III, Paxis, Nick Manji Alavori, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Yes to Crypto, Bodie McBoatface, Anytime Fitness, Monks, Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger Macho Nisa, On Crypto with Lionel, and Crayola Michelle. You are L. Thank you all very, very much for your continued support. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel. Thank you to everyone who has left a like, who has left a comment. Multiple comments who are just writing random stuff in the comment section to help out the algorithm and everyone who's still here listening to me talk about the world at the moment. Bitcoin is currently up by 1.4% in the last 24 hours. Ethereum is up by 2.54%. It is a smidge, once again, away from $1,600. Binance Coin is up by 4% and 22% in the last week. That coin is constantly always pumping. XRP is up by 9 percentile points. Is up by 8% in the last week. There's a lot of energy flowing around XRP right now. Dogecoin is down by 8 point something percent off of the sad Elon Musk news. It is still up by 45% in the last week. Don't be sad. You probably still made money. Cardano is up by 3%. Polygon is up by 15% in the last 24 hours and 21% in the last seven days. You see the line going right up. Polkadot is up by three. Shiba Inu is up by two. Avalanche is up by one. Litecoin is up by 7% and 22% in the last seven days. I, is some kind of weird phenomenon. Cosmos is up by eight. Chainlink is up by 4%. Stellar is up by four. Stellar always goes up whenever XRP goes up. Monero is up by two, Algorand is up by four, and it's up by 19%. Remember, I was just telling you about Algorand. Algorand is up by 19% in the last seven days. Near Protocol is up by 
Anything else crazy? V Chain Thor is up by four. Chillas is up by 28% in the last seven days. Elrond is up by 7% in the last seven days. Ave is up by 9% today and 13% in the last week as well. Sandbox is up by 9% in the last week. Theta is up by 9 in the last week. Decentraland's up by 7 in the last week. OKB, that's a weird, that's a very weird movement. OKB is up by 23% today and up by 27% in the last seven days. That is a very weird line up. I wonder, huh, very, very odd. Anything else? Nah. Yeah. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever the heck you might be on this weird, weird planet. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, commenting, subscribing, and or supporting in your own way. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.